not looked at a cheap phone for a while so today I'm going to be looking at this which is the Ulephone Note 16 Pro. I don't actually know if there's a Note 16 without the Pro but this is the Pro version. So have a quick look around the box. So not a great deal going on on the box apart from the specs on this side so I will just read you through these. So it has an octa-core processor, 8GB of RAM, 128GB of storage, 6.52 inch water drop display, 50 megapixel dual rear camera and it's 4G so no 5G on there, side fingerprint sensor, 4400 milliamp hour battery and it comes with Android 13 which is quite recent. Let's get out of the box. So we have got the phone itself which we'll take a look at in a bit more detail soon. I've got the blue version of it and then we've got a quick guide to using the phone so it's in colour now so maybe that's why it's pro um, <laughs> dual sim or micro SD and sim and I'll talk you through all the bits around the edge of that in a moment safety prompt card so I think this is just like don't put it in the bath or oh no declaration of conformity that kind of thing charging instructions and warranty card and there's also a little thing here to activate the warranty which you could use comes with one of these cases which is just a basic transparent one USB-C charging cable charger which is going to open up there we go so it is a 10 watt charger so it may well charge a little bit quicker than with a 5 watt charger approximately twice as quick so we'll clear all this off and look at the phone here it is one thing i have noticed with this phone is up in the top left hand corner there's no sim in there and it seems to be telling me that in a different language so i'm not sure why uh, as it is set to english uk up on the top end we've got absolutely nothing on the bottom end we have headphone jack, USB-C and speaker there and also a microphone there. On the side we've got the fingerprint or thumbprint sensor, we've got volume rocker up and down. And then we've just got the SIM tray on this other side which is dual SIM, 4G, doesn't support 5G uh, or single SIM and micro SD card up to 256 gigabytes. On the back we've got AI dual camera, so we've got a 50 megapixel camera and then I don't know what that other one is, um, but I will put details below and we'll, we'll test it, so that's all good. And it does have a flash as well. Fingerprint sensor, very responsive, it's got a nice look like a Google Pixel, um, they've not really changed much from the basic UI. There's quite a big chin on the bottom of this uh, where there's what could have been screen real estate that's just blank. Um, so a bit disappointing but not unexpected at this price range. Looking in the app drawer, it seems fairly responsive. 60 hertz display refresh, that's not adjustable, it doesn't go any higher. Um, not too bad though. There's a couple of apps I've installed like Call of Duty, Minecraft and wordscapes but other than that there's not really much else on here other than the the default google apps and a couple of other bits and pieces to support the play store and if you drag down from the top we've got very much like the google pixel devices we've got very similar ui to that which is quite nice and within the ui we can do split screen so if you just press the icon there when you go onto this screen here and then split top it's got YouTube at the top and then we've got Chrome browser down below and you can uh, you can move them both about at the same time if you really wanted to but you could watch a video up at the top and then underneath you could be browsing the internet or Twitter that kind of thing that's quite a nice feature but not unexpected even on such a cheap phone now Plenty of features to go out in the camera app. So we've got a HDR there, we've got a beauty mode. So you can remove acne or smoothen your face, brighten up the image, that kind of thing. Uh, we can apply filters to the photos while we're taking them. 
Uh, you can change where you're storing them. So the save location. And you can change the picture size. So you can have them 16.9 for example. Uh, but 4.3 we get full 12 megapixels. So we can switch on AI scene recognition. Which should mean we get decent results. Potentially. So picture size. For the back camera, so it only goes up to 12 megapixels, which is strange. It's supposed to be 50 megapixels. So we will just have a look, see if there's a reason for that. Um, so we've got portrait mode, panorama. And I'll just go the other way. We've got professional mode. Then just normal capture video. So video, we'll just check what resolution we can record at. So up to full HD, 1080p, 30 frames per second. So no 60 FPS and no 4K. But video stabilization on, which is good. We've got slow motion. And we've got more. So ultra res, this is going to be the 50 megapixel. So when we go into that mode, it doesn't look like we can adjust many settings. We've still got beauty mode and flash on and off, that kind of thing. So go into settings. So remove the logo watermark for when I actually use this. Um, not really anything else we can change. So I don't think we can even change it to 16.9. So it does look like in ultra res we are just stuck with a 4.3 image. And I'll just put up some images recorded in some of the different modes. Facing camera, maximum resolution 720p, 30 frames per second. Audio quality is what you hear now. Not too bad. Similar here, so this time I'm using the rear facing camera. This is full HD, 30 frames per second with image stabilization on. It's all right. And now I'm doing the same again with image stabilization off and it does feel like the image may be a bit smoother but then you're losing the stabilization. So if I shake it a little bit, it doesn't look great. So I'm just downloading an update on the Wi-Fi uh, and it seems particularly quick. Normally phones are this cheap, don't really uh, download stuff this quick. So that's quite good. I'll just show you a bit of gaming now. So we've got Call of Duty Mobile here. Seems to run rather smoothly. Uh, now just some uh, Minecraft. So uh, it seems to be ooh, running okay. It does keep glitching a little bit, but uh, it seems okay. It's certainly playable. Draw distance seems quite high. Occasional stutter, which uh, I'm sure would be resolved by reducing the draw distance down in the options. So storage, with just a handful of applications installed, you've still got a huge, well, over 100 gigabytes free. Uh, so that's that's pretty good. Battery life is reasonable. The 4,400 milliamp hour battery is more than enough to get you through a day. Not really going to get you through any more than that. So you are going to be stuck with charging every day, but usually phones that offer more than that you do anyway uh, or from my experience i do anyway uh, if it's my daily driver on display got adaptive brightness which you can switch on and off uh, you can also adjust the brightness level by dragging down twice from the top you can have night light on so if put that on turns everything orange and then we've got this video display enhancement so you can change that and it just sort of changes the contrast a little bit. Let's have a quick look at video playback on YouTube and I've got the volume cranked all the way up to the top here. So I'll just press play on this video. On 
an Amazon Fire tablet in 2023. If you're on this video on your tablet right now, it's fairly loud, but something I have noticed is it's just coming out of one mono speaker, which is a bit disappointing. So just to, to demonstrate that, I'll cover the speaker and we'll see what happens. Then what you're going to be doing is basically clicking the link. Yeah, so that's mono. That is very disappointing in this day and age. So that's pretty much it for my review of this phone. Now, it isn't a pro grade phone. I have no idea why it is called the pro. Uh, cameras, very disappointing. A single mono speaker on the bottom, also very disappointing. It will play 3D games fairly well, um, but the phone does get very hot after a while uh, and that can be a bit problematic. I have a feeling it would shut down eventually um, if you did game for too long. But it also runs the battery down very quickly. I, again, I like this shape of phone with the rounded edges. Uh, it's just a shame this one isn't quite as good on the inside. Uh, it is a nice design um, with the cameras where they are on the back there. Kind of reminds me of the recent Pocophones, phones, uh, which have much better specs. But uh, it does, yeah, it it's a cheap version of those in, in in a sense. Trying to find the positives, I think about the only thing really is the fact that it it's, it feels like using a Google Pixel at points, but then. When you go into things like the camera app, you soon quickly realise that you're not using a high quality premium device. I wouldn't expect the phone to receive any security updates. Uh, these Uniphone phones tend not to, they just come out of the box with a fairly recent version of Android and security updates, but then they never get looked at again. I would anticipate the same from this. I can't think of any reason why they would suddenly turn around and start updating this one. Uh, given the, the price of it, it's probably not worth their while in investing in a software update. Cause it'll probably brick more devices than it's worth. Screen brightness is terrible. You, you literally can't see the screen if you are in sunlight. It might look alright here in this environment, but that's just where my camera's adjusting the light around uh, so that you can see the display quite clearly. But in normal day-to-day -day use, if it's sunny, you just ain't going to be able to see this, even on the highest brightness setting. So again, very disappointing. So that's it for this video. Those of you who have been watching my videos for a while uh, will notice the frequency has reduced recently. I am going to issue an update soon on my channel uh, to explain why and my plans for the future. In the meantime, please do hit like and subscribe down there, and I'll see you in the next one.